Hi, this is Abigail Krieger, a Senior Technical Advisor for IHS Market, Petra, and Kingdom, bringing you another Petra Did You Know? A series where we present functionality and workflows from Petra you may not have been aware of. Do any of you have a drawer that looks like this? I do. We call it our junk drawer. Everything gets thrown in this drawer. Old pens that need to be thrown out get shoved in the back, and who knows what's at the bottom of this drawer. You're never going to find anything. Well, how many of you have a Petra project that kind of feels like it's this junk drawer? Did you know that Petra has an external data management tool for project cleanup? We call it Sidekick. It allows for quick and easy import, export, data management of your data and more. It'll help you turn your Petra project from this to this. So let's take a look. To open Petra Sidekick, Open up Windows Explorer and navigate to the folder where you have your root Petra install. As you can see, mine's located in the local C drive. Once you get to your installation folder, you should see the full list of Petra folders and files. If you scroll down through the files, you should see an option here called Sidekick, and it is an application. If you double click Sidekick, it will launch and open for you. The Petra Sidekick interface is pretty simple and made easy for you to use. Across the top, you'll see your menu dropdowns as well as how many wells are in that current project and how many are currently selected. Along the left hand side in your project column, you're going to see a series of different data types. So project, wells, zones, tops, logs, rasters, grids, overlays, and tables. These are all the items that you're going to be able to manage within Petra Sidekick. So under the project tab, you can see we have a lot of the project information or the summary report. So the project name description, the projection, the project paths, where all of the files sit, as well as some other information of the number of formation tops, zones, digital logs, raster logs, and production streams you have in that current project. All very helpful information. Under the wells tab, you can see we have statistics for the wells in the project. So you have total project wells and currently selected wells, same as the number listed above. But what you can do is run statistics on these totals. So in the bottom right hand side, you can see there's this scan wells button. If we select that, it's going to run through and scan all of our wells and draw up some statistics for us. So once that's complete, it's going to tell you how many wells are deviated, your minimum and maximum X and Y's, the XY difference, the minimums, latitudes and longitudes, and then it's also going to list out the counties containing wells. So in this current project, I have 20 counties in this project, and it's going to list all of those counties for me. So this is just a nice visual and a quick way to see where your wells are located for the, the extent of this project area. Now on the right hand side, you can see here is a full list of all of the wells that fall in the project. So you can do a multi select by left clicking, dragging and highlighting. Sidekick was developed with the right menu button click menu. So if you right button click, you can see there's a series of different functions you can do depending on the data that you have selected. So for this function, we can set as main well, save to a CSV, or show the alternate UWI. You can also double click on a well, and it will pull up the well viewer. So again, it's going to show you the list of the wells in the project and the well you currently have highlighted. It's going to give you all the well header information like it would in Petra's main module, as well as the well data. And in this middle section, you can change from formation tops active to zone items to zone active IP test cores per shows. It's very customizable as the data you might want to see. And then below is where you have two more fields where you can manipulate and change what data you want to see. So maybe you want to see your zone data, you want to see your formation tops, and maybe you want to see your directional surveys or perhaps maybe your perfs at the same time. So this is how you're going to be able to visualize and look at all of the well data on a well to well basis, as well as looking at wells in a multi well view. Next, we'll take a look at the zones. So under the zones, it's going to give you a carrot and it will list all of the zone tables that exist within the project. So you can see we currently have the well zone selected. Um, you can also flip to FRAC, IHS prod, or the Niobrara tables. We'll go ahead and flip back to the well table. And within the well table, it's going to list all of the well zone data items that I have within that well zone. 
It's going to give the source, the description, the kind, the date, any remarks on the well. I can put a check mark in this box and it will give me a well count for the wells that have this particular data item. Okay, we just had to wait a moment to let Petra do the count and give us the tally of how many wells have each of those zone items. So we currently have elevation KB selected and it found 23,178 wells that have that value populated. And if we go to the list on the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and expand this a little bit. You can see we have the lock field indicator. So if this, if any of these wells for this particular zone item was locked, it would put a checkbox in this box here. We have the WSN, UWI, the label, the name, and then the value. So then it's gonna give you a list of all 23,178 wells that have that value. And then it's also going to give you the change date in this column as well. So it's really a simple and effective and fast way for you to see all of the zone data items that you currently have within your projects. So if you need to come in here and start doing some cleanup, you can use this window and the maintenance tool to begin doing deletions and such. Now again, on the right hand side here, if we just do a multi well select, and right click, you can see new items become active for editing. So we can save those wells to a, save those selected wells to a WSN file, save to a CSV, we can delete them, show the value histogram, show date histogram, and then we can also show the alternate UWI. So you have a few more options in terms of the different functions you can do from the right mouse button click in the zones tab. So I mentioned using the zone maintenance tab. So if we go to our menu drop down up top, we have this maintenance function. And from the maintenance function, you can do zone data maintenance, production, raster log, and digital log. And these are the same maintenance windows that you would view from the Petra main module. So any of the functions you can do there in terms of maintenance on the data, you can do in here as well. So again, it's gonna list all of your zones. You can create new, modify, delete, or reorder. It's gonna lo load and list all the data items, as well as the advanced tab for doing some of that editing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the data maintenance tool here. So we're going to select our tops tab. And while it's loading all of our formation tops, you can see we have the zone, name, source, description, and add date, and again, any remarks on that particular well. So now it's finished loading, and on the right-hand side, it's going to give us a list again of all of the wells that have this particular formation top picked for that well. So you can see we have down at the bottom, 1,859 wells that have the Dakota D sand picked. And again, we can put a check mark in front of this box here for the total counts on each of those formations. Now on the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and expand my list here. Again, it's gonna give us our well locks, the WSN, the UWI, the label, the name, and then the value. So because we have that Dakota D selected, it's gonna list all the wells with that value and then also the change date again as well. So any editing you wanna do, so again, if we did a multi-select and right click, again, a lot of the same data fields as options for editing there, as well as again, using your maintenance windows as well. So if you need to do a global data delete or something of that nature, you can do that as well. So now we'll select our logs table. So on the logs table, it's gonna again give us a full list of all the logs that exist in the project. So the name, the description, the units and remarks. We can also do a count on this one as well. And on the right hand side, it's gonna again give us a list of the wells that have that particular formation that, or excuse me, the log that you have selected. So you can see I have a lot, I have 358 CILD logs. Um, and this count is gonna also really help you in terms of working with your aliasing or deleting or just removing unnecessary logs that you may not need anymore or don't really um, fit in the project anymore. So it's really gonna help you kind of clean things up. So if I were to select on this uh, density porosity from our row B, uh, the wells on the right hand side again are gonna become active. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this so we can see a full list of our table. And it's gonna give us all the information we need for the wells that currently have that particular log. And again, if we were to do a multi-well select, we can right click and then you can see the options we have for editing here, as well as the maintenance tab up top. If we select digital log maintenance, it will bring up our digital log maintenance window where we can delete, rename, scale, 
add new, look at the wells, um, set filters, and do all of that editing from within. So now we're going to select our rasters tab, and again, it's going to do the same exact function. It's going to go through and count and see how many raster logs. Now for this project, you can see I don't have a ton in here, but it's going to look exactly the same as it did for the digital logs. It will give you the group name description and the count, and then it would list the wells on the right-hand side of the well data that you would currently have there. So we're going to go ahead and select our grids table now, and this is going to list all of the grids you have stored within the grid folder of the root of your project. Um, and it's going to give you the file name, the method, the kind, rows, columns, so all of the header information or all the details pertaining to that particular grid. If I highlight one of the grid names and right click on it, you can see I can reload the data, I can save to a CSV file, or I can delete the set selected data. So it's really just a, a matter of being able to delete and remove grid files from your master list here. Next is going to be our overlays table, and within the overlays, it's going to look for all the overlay files that exist within the overlay folder. So you can see here I have one listed. If I double click on this overlay name, you can see it's going to pull up our map viewer, and it's going to load the, the last saved occurrence of that particular overlay. So as the instructions here say, you will left button click to zoom in and right button click to zoom out. So if I simply left button click on my map, you can see it's going to get larger. As I select it, you can see I have some erroneous data out here, which is why I'm so zoomed out. But this is gonna give you an idea of what the project area or the overlay looks like or what layers are in that overlay. And if you need more detail or you're not 100% sure, if you come to the layers menu drop down or select layers, you can see it's going to bring up the overlay layers function that would be in the map module. So if you wanted to set your associated read-only layers, you can do that from this window. You can also preview different layers from within as well as to the other options. So you can um, change some of your information on the land grid, particular layers, layer order, general images, all of the normal editing functions you have from this particular window. So we'll go ahead and close our overlay window. Now this last option, tables, I find an important piece of Sidekick and can give you a lot of really valuable information. So the tables tab here is going to list out all of the database tables that fall within the Petra project. So if any of you have ever tried or needed to run a Petra repair or Petra pack process to clean up your database, this table is actually going to give you some helpful information. So it's going to list the table name, the record count, the file size, and the pack percentage. So what does this table really tell you? Well, the pack percentage is going to be an indication of how well packed those individual database files or folders, if you will, are. And so the way this works is the higher the pack percentage, the better performance you're going to have on that table. So as we scroll down through here, you can see I have a couple tables that are not quite close to that 99, 100% capacity. So down here, you can see I have log data X that is giving me a pack percentage that might be down a little bit. So if I'm starting to see any error messages in my project, this might be an indication that I need to run the repair on this particular table. And knowing which of these tables are going to need to be repaired is going to help you speed up that repair process. Before, a lot of times, those error messages aren't terribly clear on which tables need to be repaired. And so using this table function, you might get a better idea of where you might have problems within the particular project. So if I scroll down here, you can see the full list of all the tables that exist within the project. And you're probably asking, why are there a bunch of NAs in the pack percentages? And that's because there's a cap on the record count of the data. So anything less than 2,000 on the record count is not going to generate a pack percentage, and it likely isn't going to cause any problems within the project. So that's going to cover all the options for the visible pieces from the tables on the left-hand side. One thing left to talk about is going to be your import and export functions from this as well. So if you are wanting to do a generic ASCII import, a 298 Easy Loader, a batch import of LAS digital logs, a batch import of LIC files, or a batch import of raster logs, XML files, you can do that, as well as do direct connect loads. So you want to do well data, production data, digital logs, or raster logs, you can implement and run all of those imports directly from the Sidekick window.
Now, if you want to do an export, currently there's only the ASCII tabular well data file that you can export out of this particular window. All the other exports and imports also function from PetraMain, as you know, but just know that these are the options you have from the Sidekick window. So that's going to wrap up our overview of the Petra Sidekick tool. And hopefully you got an idea of how you can use Petra Sidekick module to take your Petra project that might look something like this on the left hand side and transform it and make it look a little something on the right hand side. Thank you for watching this episode of Petra Did You Know?